Welcome back. This video is made using EVF recordings from the R7 to give you some idea of what you can expect from this camera's subject acquisition and tracking. It does also include EVF recordings from the Sony A6400 and the Sony A1 cameras to provide a comparison. Bear in mind that the footage is quite shaky as I was recording handheld using the Atomos Ninja 5. The scene we have is gannets feeding on fish with the dark sea and light sky as background. It was partly cloudy and raining occasionally, so the light was variable as clouds covered the sun at times. Unfortunately, the birds are a bit too far away for getting any really good images. Here you can see some of the challenge you can encounter with the camera's focus hunting, which makes it impossible to see anything in the scene. It would be preferable if the camera locked onto infinity because the scene remains largely in focus then but it seems the camera tries to focus as near as possible, causing the entire scene to become a blur. I use the star button with single point focus to get focus back onto the C in the foreground. So this is a typical example of where the camera quickly picks up the subject and tracks it right across the frame. However, after losing it, the camera focus changes, which makes it impossible to see any subjects at the same distance without resetting the focus point again. And here's another example of where the camera is pretty quick to pick up the turn and in that little frame you could see that it locked onto the bird's head. Here I'm fighting with the focusing again. I'm just trying to get it back so I can actually see things in the, in the distance. Uh, here you can see it's not quite able to pick that bird up. It's a little far away and now it does. This is an example of detecting and tracking a bird against the surface of the sea. As you can see, initially the camera locks onto the buoy, um, but quickly picked up the bird against the sky. Once again, it, as it gets further away, you can see the focus box is jumping all over the place until it loses the subject and then uh, resets the focus so the entire scene becomes blurry again. Okay, I'm just trying to get focus back. So now I've got focus back and focus on the boy but now I can see what's going on in the scene so I point up to the sky and bang lose the focus again so it's kind of a little bit frustrating but um, you kind of get used to it and then you figure out what to do to avoid that scenario all right so I'm going to try and pick up a gannet when it's diving and uh, once again, it picks up the bird against the sky and then bang, suddenly jumps away and loses focus completely. All right, let's start. It's not, not too happy. Okay, finally we managed to pick up this bird, which is just a gull, so actually I'm not really interested in it. So I'm hunting around now, trying to pick up a gannet in the sky again. This is a little bit tricky with the Atomos recorder on, so it's not normally, um, it's a lot easier without the Atomos recorder. Again, most of these birds are a little bit far away, so it's really at the edge of what the camera can pick up reliably. And they're a bit far away for decent images anyway, but nevertheless. Now I'm waiting for the bird to reappear and take off so we can see how well the subject detection and tracking works and you can see it picks it up pretty well and there's the odd bit of blackout as i hit the shutter button and this is an image um, that was actually taken as you can see, it's pretty sharp. I mean, it's still too far away really to be a good image, but it's, the focus has pretty much nailed the bird. Now notice how it loses focus here when I press the shutter button. So that tends to happen occasionally. You push the shutter button and it'll, for some reason, suddenly lose focus or lose tracking, should I say. So this is just a slow motion replay of the EVF as the bird's diving. And, and again, you can see the blackout from 
when I press the shutter button, but in this case it tracks the bird pretty well. It sort of hesitates on the horizon a little bit, but it catches up pretty quickly. Okay, let's try that once again. And you can see it's pretty tricky seeing the bird on the water. And the camera actually detects the bird and puts a little square around it for a second there. But again, picks it up, tracks it. I mean, in some cases, this is even better than the A1. And just to prove it's not a fluke, we'll do it one more time. So it's pretty reliable. Um, you know, can't really complain. But not sure you know, what you're going to do with the birds that far away. <laughs> and so here yeah, I'm just trying to quickly switch subjects from one bird to another bird. And you can see it's a little tricky. I'm kind of losing focus and all kinds of weird things going on. So this happens occasionally. It can be a bit annoying. So one more example where we pick up the bird and then it sort of gets a little bit too far away and the camera again loses focus. Okay, gone. So annoying. Okay, let's take a look at uh, the viewfinder when we're shooting electronic shutter. And apologies for the shaking. Um, pretty tricky with the Atomos <laughs> to try and find the bird and get it in the frame. So here you can see uh, the viewfinder is pretty much unobstructed when you're shooting. Let me just acquire the bird again. And you'll, if you look carefully, you'll see I'm actually taking images and there's very little blackout, very little lag. Um, camera just kind of loses the bird occasionally, but you know, it's kind of a little bit far away. So the whole experience is pretty nice with the EVF um, compared to with mechanical shutter. You can see there is blackout, but it seems to be a lot, lot quicker than uh, with mechanical shutter. And again, it's just a shame the wind wasn't blowing the other way because then typically the birds would fly in towards you and you get much, much better shots. These are all going away, so they're really not ending up being particularly useful shots. I think there's a couple of the A1 where the bird does fly towards me and comes in a lot closer. Unfortunately, that uh, wasn't to happen while I was holding the R7. Again, see the tracking? I mean, really, you, know, you can't fault that. That's about as good as it needs to be. Okay, I'm picking up the subject, no problem, tracking it, and then another one joins it, and it stays locked onto that original one, bang, and then it switches halfway through in the dive. <laughs> and the two birds pop to the surface. And there you go, it's picked one up, let's see if we can, yep, there we go, tracking it up, let's jump back to the first one. Oh, okay, now this is confused, but we pick up one as it flies past.
let's take a look at some of those images uh, with the electronic shutter. Uh, and this is an example where I'm tracking the bird, panning left and panning right. And you can see the slightly different shape of the boat in of the ship in the background, where in the one case the rear is sort of leaning backwards, and in the other case it's kind of maybe leaning forward or vertical. Um, so it's not really going to bother bother you much because you don't typically compare two images. All right, let's have a look at the A6400 with mechanical shutter. Notice how much darker the EVF is, although ISO is higher and f-stop is, is wide open. A few things that are different that I noticed. EVF is darker for a start. There seems to be less stabilization, so the whole scene is a little bit more jerky. The autofocus indicators are just little squares and never give an indication that a subject has been found. Primarily, I think the camera is just focusing on whatever is nearest the camera. Blackout when shooting with mechanical shutter is much more noticeable. Tracking a bird over the water is not very reliable, and it's never clear whether the camera is tracking the bird or whether it's just actually focusing on the water. Even the flock of seagulls, it's really not clear whether the camera is locked under the birds or the water. Similarly, when the gannet is diving, the camera sort of follows the bird down, but it's not, not as definitive as with the R7. So as you can see, the, the tracking on the A6400 is it's not, nothing, nothing like the R7, so it's substantially better for tracking birds on the R7, no question. And I think the EVF is also better quality. So let's take a look at the A1's EVF. Well, I think in general it's pretty similar to the R7. It's brighter and seems to be, uh, you know, slightly more detail. And I think the big difference you'll notice is when I'm shooting with the A1, there's no blackout, no lag. It's pretty seamless. It also does a better job of tracking birds to the edge of the frame, frame. but has a similar sort of out of focus issue occasionally, not as frequently. And one thing it seems a lot better at is picking up and tracking the small birds a long way off. As you can see, it's pretty good at picking up the birds, but it's not foolproof. Kind of, it does lose them occasionally. And they you know, lost it behind the wave, but then it picks it up pretty much immediately. Let me just apologize again for the shakiness. I'm shooting at 840 millimeters with Atomos recorder, so it's very difficult to keep anything even vaguely stable. Usually, it's not going to be this anywhere near this bad. I think probably lose a few birds 
uh, I focus on the few, few birds be because I'm, I'm not very stable with the Atomus recorder on. Anyway, you can see here as an example of, again, where, you know, th there's a bird, but even the A1 is going to struggle to pick that up. It's pretty dark in the, sh in the shade. Okay, here's an example of the A1 with two birds on the water. Let's see how well it picks them up as they fly off. So you can see there, like the R7 does a better job picking them up straight away on the water. But once, once they um, above the horizon, the A1 does a pretty good job jumping on them and tracking them. And usually it'll follow them along the surface of the water. Okay, and finally, uh, the bird decides to come towards me and almost fill the frame. And again, A1 tracking it without too many problems. And here's a copy of the actual image that was taken. And it's still too, too big a crop to be particularly useful. So while we look at some of the a1 images. Um, I'll just give a bit of a, a summary of my thoughts on the R7. Well, I think the R7 bird subject detection and tracking is very good for an on stack sensor. The actual autofocus accuracy seemed to let it down a little. So don't expect every image to be tack sharp in focus. Nevertheless, it's plenty good enough to get a lot of good images. Now there are a few things to look out for when using the R7. These include, if the bird is too small, it will not be detected, even if quite visible to the naked eye. The R7 will often suddenly lose focus if there are other potentially distracting features in the background or foreground. The R7 will often get completely out of focus, making it necessary to reset the focus point on the horizon or to something in the foreground in order to be able to see anything in the EVF. The R7 will often switch focus to another subject that is close to the camera. For example, another bird that passes in front of the one that's currently in focus. The camera does have some tracking settings for adjusting the subject's stickiness, but to date I have not used them. The EVF view is smoother and has less lag and virtually no blackout in electronic shutter mode. However, images may have rolling shutter distortion when using electronic shutter, so use the electronic shutter with care. The EVF view has blackout and quite significant initial delay lag when using mechanical shutter. The R7 also appears to blow out whites on the subject when I used settings that similar to settings I was using on the Sony. Having said all that, I think the R7 is still the best you know, wildlife action camera available in that price range by considerable margin. 
it certainly outperforms the A6400 when it comes to detecting and tracking birds in flight. Well, that's it from me. I uh, hope you enjoyed that, found it useful. Until next time.